let's go ahead and start with uh, running a Jupyter Notebook locally. So um, as I mentioned, the easiest way is to um, install the uh, local version of Jupyter Notebooks using Anaconda. Um, it is possible and it's, it's a, a, to install only Jupyter Notebooks as a separate installation from Anaconda. Um, it's a little bit less straightforward and there are instructions online for doing that. Um, it is a lot faster than installing Anaconda. I was in an airport one time, foolishly tried to install Anaconda and realized that just wasn't going to happen on the airport Wi-Fi, but I was able to install Jupyter Notebooks as a, a standalone installation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you um, how to open and run a Jupyter Notebook that you already have on your computer. Now that Anaconda Navigator has loaded, I will go ahead and launch Jupyter Notebooks. So as I said before, what this is actually doing is running a, lo a local web server on your computer. And when, you, uh, when it opens up to the file navigator, the default location, the first time it opens is your home directory, which is represented by this little file folder here. Um, I think that Mac users are typically more aware of what their home folder is. Sometimes PC users aren't even aware that they have a home folder. And the, um, so the, the subfolders and the files that you're gonna have available to you are all subfolders of your home folder. So if you're a Windows user and you don't know where your home folder is, that could potentially be a problem if you have to put files there. However, some of the uh, commonly used folders that people are familiar with, like desktop, documents, and the downloads folder, are all nested within your home folder. So if you know how to um, put something in on the desktop or in your documents folder, then you're good to go because you can just uh, open Jupyter Notebooks and then click on either uh, one of those folders. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my documents folder here and find a notebook that I already have here. So to run the notebook, all you have to do is click on the link. It will open in a new tab. And so now I'm ready to go ahead and run the code cells. Um, when you're done running this notebook, all you have to do is to close the tab for that notebook. However, uh, that will only close the notebook itself. It will not close the navigator, the file navigator. Um, it's important because this is running a web server on your local computer that you actually click on this quit button that is in the upper right corner first. If you don't click on the quit button, then the, the window will close but the web server will continue to run. And so you'll wonder why is there a terminal window with all this stuff in it? That's because basically you've left the web server running. You can go into the terminal window and kill the web server, but it's actually better if you just click the quit button and then it'll tell you that you can go ahead and close the tab. 